Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Benjamin Lawrence, and I am the acting head of department for this semester. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 graduation celebration for the Department of History at the University of Arizona here in Tucson, Arizona. And I know we're all scattered and remote, uh, but many of us are either in person living here still in Tucson, or some of us are far flung, um, but we're all very fortunate to be able to get together today and meet virtually via Zoom. We're thrilled to have so many parents and family and friends joining us, celebrating the achievements of our students, our peers, our friends, our, our mentors. And so we're very excited that you have chosen to join us today to celebrate the achievements of your friends and family of our students. And this year, the achievement is even greater perhaps than in previous years because the students, at least for the last year, year and a half, have had to survive great adversity. The teaching has transitioned primarily to online only uh, and has been through Zoom, through this medium that we're using right now. Some of us have been on Zoom eight hours a day for the last 15, 16 weeks, and the semester before that, the same. And the students have adapted to that and they have survived and they've emerged all the stronger and more. Uh, impressive. I think we need to recognize that. What a year it's been. But before we get going uh, with this year's ceremony, I would like to uh, make some recognition and some thank yous. So I think it's important for us to recognize that the University of Arizona is located on the unceded ancestral homelands of the Tohono O'odham people, who, along with the Yaqui people, have inhabited this land for millennia. Not only had they inhabited it, but it farmed it. And for those of you who may have taken my food history class or have taken other food history classes, you know that this land that we're sitting on, where we're located, is the oldest continuously farmed land in the United States. And we have records of people farming here, the Hokam people farming as early as three, four, maybe even 5,000 years ago. I'd also like to recognize our department staff who have also endured a rather remarkable, unsettling, difficult, scary uh, year and have emerged also stronger. I'd particularly like to thank Adam Donaldson, Dakota Hogeboom, and Jose Garcia, who are our main staff uh, in the office. And some of them have actually been staffing the office throughout these semesters. Uh, during COVID. And I'd also like to thank one of our graduates who's also a member of our staff, and that's Katrina Cookshausen, who is uh, going to be, you'll be hearing from in a little while. Um, our staff are a very important part of our family, and they have, uh, as I said, adapted to uh, the very difficult exigencies of the COVID pandemic particularly well. And we really would like to take this opportunity to recognize their contribution. So I hope most of you have before you the, um, the description of the program. I uh, would like to begin the program today and, uh, and uh, begin the celebration of our students' achievements by recognizing those who are prize winners and prize recipients. The Department of History has a number of prizes and scholarships that it awards to particularly deserving and high achieving students. And so I'd like to first turn to the uh, Ursula Lamb Prize. The Ursula Lamb Prize recognizes the late distinguished Latin American historian Ursula Schaefer Lamb, who is a pioneering woman academic and a tenured professor here in the Department of History. Ursula was born in Germany in 1914 and was arrested by the Nazi authorities for anti-Nazi protests, after which she fled to the United States and studied at Dartmouth, uh, sorry, at Smith College. She completed her PhD at UC Berkeley in 1949. But due to the prejudices against women in that era, Lamb was prevented from pursuing her first choices in her academic career. 
She did teach first at Barnard and then at Brasenose College, Oxford, and for, at Yale University for 13 years. And then in 1934, she joined our department and stayed here for a decade as a tenured professor. It was not until she joined the University of Arizona did she hold a tenured professor position. In 1990, she was recognized by the Conference of Latin American Historians with their Distinguished Service Award, its highest honor. She was the first woman to receive it. And upon her death in 1996, the Hispanic American Historical Review took the unusual action of publishing two obituaries following her death to celebrate the breadth and significance of her remarkable achievements. We're honored as a department to be to maintain this continual association with the memory of Ursula Lamb. This year's Ursula Lamb Prize is for the first time shared by three students. We're very excited to announce this year's prize winners. Catherine Barton is the first of the prize winners. Catherine Barton's thesis was entitled Contre l'Etarc, an entretement of the Feast of the Pheasant. Professor Milliman writes, in my 14 years of teaching at the University of Arizona, no other student has combined creativity and scholarship as successfully as Catherine. For her project, Catherine wrote a medieval play. It is simply brilliant, based firmly on a detailed and nuanced reading of the primary and secondary sources. Please join me in congratulating Catherine Barton. The second recipient of this Ursula Lamb Prize this year is Charles Brad Hintz for his paper entitled Saving Bering Brothers. Why did the Salisbury government act? Professor Gosner writes, Brad's research examines a benchmark event in the history of modern finance and global capitalism. The decision in 1890 to 1991 by the British government to bail out for the first time a private merchant bank, the Bering Brothers. Brand's paper offers a strong effort to mine primary sources coupled with a most comprehensive reading of the appropriate historiography. Please join me in congratulating Brad Hintz. And we'll be hearing briefly from all three of them in a moment. And the third recipient of our prize is Wes Salter, the psychological trauma of British women as a result of the Great War. Professor Tabili writes, Wes Salter has produced a highly original study challenging the gender specificity of World War I era shell shock. The paper is based on sensitive and acute reading of voluminous primary sources, including war memoirs and diaries, as well as a poetry by field nurses and other British women and men affected by the First World War. Please join me in congratulating Wes Salter. Congratulations to Catherine, Brad and Wes. And now we'll be able to hear from the three of them briefly. I'll turn that over to them. And here we first hear from Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm thrilled to be honored with this prize. And I would like to thank Dr. Milliman. I'm sure that a medieval play doesn't fit neatly into any sort of grading rubric, but I really appreciate his support in allowing me to pursue my passion through research, so thank you. Thank you, Catherine. It was very enjoyable watching the stage performance that was pre-recorded by Catherine and her peers. She distributed all the speaking parts to her friends and they joined on Zoom to pre-record the play that she wrote. Congratulations, Catherine. And now we'll be hearing briefly from Brad Hintz.
Oh, I see Brad is not here today. And perhaps we will hear then from Wes Salter. Hi, uh, I'm Wes. Uh, un unbelievable honor. Uh, great thanks to Dr. Tabui. Um, this was a, um, a, a labor of love. Um, I, I'm a, a military veteran myself, uh, diagnosed with PTSD, and uh, I really wanted to help uh, recognize and represent uh, women of, of the great war that have gone unrecognized in the uh, gendered term of shell shock. Uh, where it only recognizes essentially soldiers. So again, this is an incredible honor. I was not expecting it. And thank you to, to all the professors over the past couple of years that have uh, mentored and guided me. Thank you. Congratulations, Wes. Thank you so much for joining us. My own grandfather was uh, severely injured in World War I in the Western Front and suffered extensively from the trauma. Uh, and uh, so it's really wonderful to see that you are able to draw on your own experience and use that to shed the historical light that's much needed on the experience of women who are marginalized from the history of World War I. Congratulations. Congratulations again to Brad and Catherine and Wes. We now turn to the Catherine Gouvernal Prize. The Catherine A. Gouvernal Prize today recognizes the generous gift of George and Roberta Gouvernal in memory of their daughter, Catherine Ann. This award is a, recognizes a distinguished student in overcoming personal, economic, or physical obstacles to complete their degree at the University of Arizona. The recipient for this year is Emily Opper. Emily Amelia Opper. Since 2020, we have all gone through difficult times, writes Professor Milliman. But in addition to dealing with the pandemic, Emilia Oppa, the winner of this year's prize, has dealt with a number of serious difficulties in her life, any one of which would have caused many others to abandon their college career and cumulatively would have been overwhelming for most people. In each semester of 2020, spring, summer, and fall, Emilia was forced to withdraw from courses or take incompletes because at the beginning of each semester, multiple serious difficulties arose, which forced her to place her education on hold. But Amelia persevered, and through it all, through completing six courses this semester, including her senior capstone that she began last spring. We're thrilled that Emily, Amelia is joining the ranks of our graduates. Congratulations. And now we'll briefly hear from Emily, Amelia. Hi, I don't know if you guys can see me. You can, uh, thank you. Oh, perfect. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, I just wanna say thank you to Professor Milliman for supporting me this whole time, um, everyone in the history department and my advisor, um, Catherine, um, everyone has just, been so great in helping me get to where I, you know, wanted to be today. Um, and I just feel like it's such an accomplishment that I wouldn't have without um, the support of the school. So thank you. Emily, we're so happy to see you graduate and to be a recipient of this award. And it means a great deal to us that we can support our students through adversity. And so everybody, again, please join me in congratulating Emily. We now turn to scholarships. The Department of History awards several scholarships to recognize students of particular achievement and particular aptitude. This year, we are celebrating three students. The first student is Emma Gould. Emma Gould is the recipient of two awards this year. First is the Grace and Robert Cosgrove Endowment Scholarship. The Grace and Robert Cosgrove, sorry, Grace and Robert Cosgrove are family members of Richard Cosgrove, a former head of the history department and a historian of early modern Britain. Emma is also the recipient of the Robideau Foundation History Undergraduate Scholarship. Melody Robideau graduated from the University of Arizona with a degree in political science and then completed a JD at the College of Law 
And a few years later, as a co-owner and CEO of a Tucson technology company, she helped drive and manage the growth of the company until she sold her interest and committed her life to philanthropy, after which she founded the Melody Roberto Foundation. And she also has co-founded the Women's Foundation of Southern Arizona. Congratulations, Emma, to be a recipient of both the Robert, the Grace and Robert Cosgrove Endowment and the Robert O. Foundation History Undergraduate Scholarship. And now we'll turn briefly to hear from Emma. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. I really enjoyed my time in the history department and um, I wanted to say thank you to Dr. Ortiz and Dr. Vetter. You two had a really tremendous impact on my education and I can't wait to continue studying history in the future. It's a real love of mine. Thank you so much. Oh, Emma, that's music to our ears that we hear our students not only graduate but commit to continuing to study history. Congratulations again. The next recipient that I would like to recognize is Justin Quinn. Justin Quinn is a, an awardee of the Benjamin Arthur Hesketh Memorial Scholarship. Justin uh, is another remarkable student in our program. And this scholarship was created by Matt and Lindsay Herseth in memory of their brother, Ben, who after graduating high school, followed his brother, Matt, to the University of Arizona. Shortly before deciding to declare history as his major, Tragically, Ben died in a car crash in 2008. Forgoing traditional wedding gifts, Matt and Lindsay asked their guests, their guests to contribute to a memorial scholarship in their brother's honor. It was first awarded in 2015. This scholarship recognizes promising students who engage in original research in archives and special collections as they so seek to carve out their own identities as young historians. Congratulations, Justin. And now we'll hear briefly from Justin. Hi guys, um, I'm very, very happy to have won this. I'm absolutely overjoyed. Um, I'm graduating um, in tomorrow. So um, this is a huge topping to my entire career here. I wanted to thank all of you um, who have um, played a role in my success here. It's been extremely challenging the last um, year. So uh, this, is, this is fabulous. So thank you all very much. Um, well, thank you, Justin. And I think I heard your cat chiming in in congratulatory meow in the background. Wonderful news. Thank you. And I will probably see you tomorrow at graduation. Congratulations again, Justin. And finally, not last and certainly not least, we'd like to recognize Katrina Lynn Cookshausen de Rose. Our own Katrina is the recipient of this year of, of uh, two prizes this year. She is also a recipient of the Benjamin Arthur Hesketh Memorial Scholarship as I previously outlined, was created to honor a student who tragically died after his first, first year at the University of Arizona. In addition, Katrina is the recipient of the Robert Vinery Endowment Fund. Bob Vinery was for many years a much loved faculty member in history, specializing in modern Europe. The scholarship was established by his family to honor his many contributions to the department. Congratulations, Katrina. And now we're going to hear from Katrina as she accepts her two scholarships. So I just, of course, wanna say thank you so much to everybody who's helped me along in this journey. And I can't even put into words how much the support of the history department has done for my academic career and you know just my personal growth. I can't even, I'm just so grateful to you all and thank, thank you for supporting me along the way. <laughs> well, it's wonderful news, Katrina, and thank you. I will have other opportunities to celebrate your achievements this afternoon and also tomorrow. Uh, I do believe 
that I'm correct in stating that Katrina is graduating as a triple major. Is that right? And yeah. also a minor. So she, I don't think there you'll find many students who manage to find the time to uh, not only complete three majors and a minor, but also she has served valiantly this year and even longer as the president of the Honor Society. And we'll hear more about that in due course. So congratulations again to Katrina. It's now my pleasure to begin the general ceremony as we recognize students in attendance who are graduating this year with a Bachelor of Arts in History. We have students who graduated both in uh, fall and uh, in this past semester, this past spring semester. The first student we'd like to recognize is Louis Alexander Lopez. Professor Crane writes of, of Mr. Lopez, Louis did great work in the History of Memories course and always asked great questions. Congratulate, congratulations, Louis. Professor Erica Perez writes, I met Louis last spring in my Mexican American history course uh, that was comprised of many talented and wonderful students who showed amazing commitment and engagement in various ways, whether through their written work, their excellent research and creative work and contributions to class discussions. Early on in the semester, Louis demonstrated great intellect and ability to analyze nuanced dimensions of course materials and probative questions about lecture content that were very helpful in allowing me to expand on certain elements and he showed wonderful potential. Of course, the pandemic threw him and many of us for a loop and it should be mentioned that Louis had to contend with a cast on his arm in several, during several weeks of his semester, which made writing difficult. But certainly despite the setbacks, Rui responded with grace and flexibility and we wish him luck in the future adventures. Congratulations, Louis. Louis, would you like to say a few words? I see Louis not here. Thank you, Dakota. So moving on to the graduates for uh, finishing their degree this spring, summer 2021. The first student we'd like to recognize is Sultan Ahmad al Sudairi. Professor Dick Eaton writes about Sultan. He first appeared in my fall 2018 Medieval India course and instantly stood out as an exceptional student. His term paper analyzed an account of an eighth century Arab conqueror from the lowest in lower Indus Valley who happened to be from it, happened to be from, wait for it, Sultan's own hometown in Saudi Arabia. The project was as brilliant as it was fortuitous. Sultan examined the historiographical question of whether the account in question was a real 13th century tr Persian translation of an original eighth century Arabic account, or was it was, whether it was a 13th century Persian translation a Persian text only pretending to be a translation of that count. The result was a masterful piece of detective work worthy of Sherlock Holmes. The next year I was lucky to have Sultan in my senior capstone course and he compared the travel accounts of two Arab travelers, Ibn Hakwal and Ibn Jubayr, who had wandered far from their respective homes and whose reactions to the societies they encountered were completely counterintuitive. Explaining those counterintuitive responses with another, another academic tour de force. Professor Doug Wiener writes, Sultan studied Soviet history with me in spring 2019 and impressed me with his incisive analysis and superb questions. Never lose your drive to understand things, nor, open, nor your open and friendly manner. I wish you every success. Please join me in congratulating Sultan. Would Sultan like to say a few words? For the wonderful comments and thank you everyone in the history uh, department for your support. It means the world to me. Uh, the past four years have been exceptional and I couldn't have asked for a better college experience. So thank you everyone. Well, thank you so much Sultan. The next student we'd like to recognize is Catherine Barton. Paul, Professor Paul Milliman writes, I've always encouraged students to combine creativity and scholarship in their research assignments in my courses. And as, this, as we already learned in the 14 years of his teaching, no other student has combined these two attributes as successfully as Catherine. As we remember, she wrote a medieval play. That's right, a medieval play. But that's not all. Her detailed instruction, introduction explains the context in which would have 
uh, how it would have been written and performed, and she builds on the scholarly apparatus by including dozens of footnotes detailing puns and other wordplay in the dialogue and in her scholarly and creative decisions. It's simply brilliant that she was able to produce such a creative project based firmly on detailed and nuanced reading of primary sources. As I mentioned, we already saw the first dry dress rehearsal of her Zoom production with her friends in their, in their apartments, and it was very entertaining. Congratulations, Catherine. Catherine, would you like to say a few words? I think my favorite thing about the history department is that every professor that I've ever had has addressed me and treated me as a historian. And it's honestly changed the way that I think about myself. So um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna pursue in the future, but even just four years of being a historian has been the greatest experience of my life. So thank you. Well, thank you, Catherine. That's a wonderful compliment to our department and to my colleagues. And I think it really speaks volumes to uh, what we hope and aspire to for our students. That you are all historians in the making and now you're historians having been made. So we hope that you continue to concur in your career as historians, regardless of the, of the path you choose for your profession. Our next recipient is, the, uh, is a Megan Boemke, who is a recipient of a minor in history. Dr. Erica Perez writes, I met Megan this spring in my women's history course, where she was one of a, among a highly competitive group of students. In fact, Megan and her peers were the strongest group of undergraduates I've had in my 10 years of teaching here. Megan was a key contributor to this high level of excellence and she constantly showed polish and sophistication in her writing and her excellent primary source use and displayed an overall mastery of course material throughout the semester. While Megan and her peers helped to cultivate a wonderfully intellectual atmosphere, she and others also shaped a welcoming and positive class dynamic, one that engendered tremendous trust. Congratulations, Megan. And Dr. Yadviga Pipamuni also writes, it was a great pleasure to have Megan in my course on Latin American history. She was an engaged reader with great analytical skills. For her final project, she decided to analyze, analyze Manuel Puig's iconic novel, Kiss of the Spider Woman with a focus on gender relations and produced a thought provoking podcast on the subject where she addresses complex subjects in a sensitive and memorable presentation. Congratulations, Megan. Would you like to say a few words? Oh, I understand from Dakota that Megan is not here. Congratulations again, Megan. We now move on to uh, Joseph Anthony Garcia, a recipient of a bachelor's in, his, in of arts and history. Professor Kevin Gosner writes of Joseph, Joey took two classes with me, including the capstone seminar this spring. Every day in every class, he brought his enthusiasm, his deep and genuine curiosity and his compassionate perspective on the varieties of human experience that we explore in our classes. He's very knowledgeable, a skilled writer and a serious thinker and had a great sense of humor. He'll be starting the Teach for Arizona program and I'm just thrilled that he's gonna be a high school teacher. Professor David Ortiz writes, it was a pleasure having Joey in two of my courses during his career at the U of A. Joey is a fine student who demonstrated a portion of his dedication to his education by commuting to class from Nogales. I'm sure he spent at least some of that driving time on Interstate 19 thinking about assignments I had cooked up for him. Now he's earned his bachelor's degree and I look forward to seeing him pursue his goal of teaching in the K-12 system in the future. Good luck and congratulations. Please join me in congratulating Joseph Garcia. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, I just uh, thank you so much to Dr. Ortiz. Thank you, Dr. Gossner. You guys have made a really big impact on me and uh, I can't wait to start teaching. Uh, and the Teach for Arizona program is gonna help me give back to my community and teach everyone uh, what you guys have taught me. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joseph. It's wonderful to know that our graduates are going straight back into the school system to offer back to the uh, younger generation many of the things they've learned in the classroom. 
And now we uh, recognize Jordan Nicole Hamilton. Professor Susan Crane writes, it was a pleasure to get to know Jordan in the Holocaust course I teach. The subject matter was intense and Jordan always prepared to deal with it rigorously and sensitively. I'm very pleased to congratulate Jordan on her acceptance into the Teach Arizona program, where she'll earn her master's and start teaching at the Marana High School in the fall. Those students will be lucky to have you. Professor Perez writes, Jordan is one of the three amazing and most talented people who are graduating today and deserve special mention. I single them out by name because Jordan showed amazing dedication in her senior capstone course on riots and social uprisings last fall, taking additional courses with me during this past year. What is especially important to understand is that a senior thesis requires a significant body of scholarly research into historical texts and primary sources, as well as developing expertise on recent scholarship. Students have to submit multiple drafts and work on the paper day in and day out for a full semester to accomplish a respectable thesis in the middle of a pandemic is quite an achievement. Professor Douglas Weiner writes, Jordan has been studying world history with me this past summer semester and to her great credit, despite our current pandemic, she has not let even the slightest secondary infection of senioritis infect her work in this course. She has turned in excellent essays and is a lively and creative participant in class discussions. We appreciate very much your engagement. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jordan. Would you like to say a few words? Hi, one second. <laughs> okay, I just want to say thank you to all my professors. I loved having each and every one of them and they all just taught me like so much about my, just about the world, like how to expand my worldview and I love all of them. They're great. <laughs> thank you so much, Jordan. And we're also thrilled to see another one of our graduates returning and giving back to the local community through the Teach for Arizona program. Now I'd like to turn to Garrett Ford Hicks. Professor Maria McQuirter writes, it's been wonderful to have Garrett in, our two, in two of my classes, a course on digital histories of university and an intro to public history. For the first course, Garrett wrote us, created a story map on World War II for the, at the university. He created an excellent project using archival materials, and he did so at the onset of COVID in spring 2020. In the second course, he built on his facility with story maps to teach this digital platform to his peers. Moreover, he was the only undergraduate in a hybrid course and did exceedingly well. I was impressed by his desire to do the level of work that the graduate students were also doing. And he really shined when he facilitated one of the weekly classes. Garrett also had an internship at the Sholo Museum and the director of the museum who served as a supervisor said, Garrett has been a pleasure to work with and we have taught each other throughout the semester. Professor Laura Tabili writes, Garrett is a hardworking student who produced a valuable and original study of civilian experiences and responses to the Blitz in wartime Britain. He also had offered extraordinary and thoughtful penetrating feedback to his colleagues in the same course. We wish Garrett the best. Please join me in congratulating Garrett. Would you like to say a few words, Garrett? I would just like to thank all my professors, my academic advisor and the history department for everything. So thank you very much. Thank you, Garrett. I'd now like to turn to Jesse Janal Laros. Professor Paul Milliman writes, Jesse took two courses with me, including the senior capstone. In both of these courses, Jesse explored and analyzed unusual beliefs about what caused the Black Death. It turns out fashion choices, particularly the fashion choices of wealthy women, were the 5G towers of the Middle Ages. Congratulations, Jesse. Jesse, would you like to say a few words? Okay, Jesse's not here. We'll now move on to Gregory Allen Latherow. Professor John Stephen Johnston writes, it's a shame that Greg Latherow had, <laughs> sorry, I, I read this and I laughed the first time I wrote it. I laughed the first time I read it and I'm messing up again. <laughs> 
Thanks, Steve. Uh, Professor Steve Johnson writes, it's a shame that Greg Latherow has such a passion for ancient history because it means that after he took six classes with me, setting a new world record, there was nothing left for anyone else. You all missed out on a wonderful student, curious, diligent, smart, and generous. Greg increased the friendliness and sharpened the conversations in every class he was in. I feel lucky to have monopolized him for three years. <laughs> Professor Vetta, Jeremy Vetta, who apparently did also <laughs> have the benefit of teaching Gregory, writes, I had Greg in two different classes at the same time. He did excellent work in both of them. In the senior capstone, he completed a well-researched and compelling study about US Soviet cooperative space exploration in the 1970s, entitled A Tale of Two Spacecraft. Making use of extensive NASA archives online, which included not only textual documents, but val valuable visual images, along with press coverage, Greg was able to demonstrate an engaging project, but also to show the wider influence in shaping Cold War perceptions in scholarship. In another class based on role-playing about Vietnam and the Cold War era, Greg was constantly well-prepared and a strong participant, thinking strategically and jumping into action. Congratulations, Greg. And Professor Douglas Weiner writes, Greg took my global environmental history class and was a star. His, Greg's brilliant mind was effortlessly simulated and analyzed our course readings, and he was always impeccably prepared. Please join me in congratulating Greg. Would you like to say a few things? Uh, yes, um, I, I would like to just express my sincere thanks to Dr. Vetter and Dr. Johnstone um, uh, for all their guidance. Um, I'd also like to express my thanks to, to Dr. Wiener for um, getting me really engaged in the history department early on, and also um, Dr. Gallian for her invaluable um, guidance uh, through my uh, entire degree and everything. Um, thank you all so much. Thank you, Greg. We now turn to Ashley Nicole Moreno. Professor Kevin Gosner writes, this spring Ashley produced a video documentary for her capstone seminar project exploring the impact of the Chicano movement on high school students here in Tucson and offered an historical perspective on the controversial effort to ban Mexican American studies in the unified school district. Ashley combined documentary film footage and about a dozen oral histories that she collected among family and neighbors to produce a rich and compelling and moving film of her own. Dr. Erica Perez writes, I met Ashley last spring in my course on Mexican American history and the semester resulted in a shift from in-person to online classes. And despite the many challenges this posed for students, Ashley showcased excellent work in her assignments, particularly her museum-based creative assignment. Ashley put much thought into an excellent written essay that supported the images she had created for a Loteria card game. A key element of a good Loteria card is the incorporation of some humorous references, which she achieved. She reflected her knowledge of the Zoot Suit riots in Los Angeles and Pachuco culture, the interwar community of Mexican Americans in Chicago, the role of women as godmothers and community builders and healers, and a solid knowledge of Corridos. Congratulations, Ashley. Is Ashley here? And would you like to say a few words? Okay, I think we'll move on now. Oh, no, Ashley is here. I just wanna thank um, all my professors in the history department. I transferred here from Pima and I was really scared, but as a history major, I met a lot of really cool people and the professors welcomed me with open arms and I'm excited to take everything I learned as I become a teacher and I get my master's degree. Oh, Ashley, that's such wonderful news. Thank you for sharing that with us. And it's really, truly wonderful uh, to know that you were able to successfully transfer from Pima Community College. Some of our best graduates are, are the ones who succeed at Pima and move across to U of A. And that's because they're the most dedicated and often the most engaged uh, with their goals for career success. Um, and I've experienced similar in, uh, I have a similar sentiment about my experiences in teaching in other institutions. So congratulations again, Ashley. We now turn to Emily Oppa. Professor Paul Milliman uh, writes, uh, 
as I previously observed, that um, during these difficult times, Emily, the recipient of this year's Gouvernail Perseverance Award, dealt with a number of difficulties in her life, but she persisted and was able to succeed uh, by completing six courses this semester. Uh, Emily, would you like to say uh, a few more words about your history degree and your achievements? Oh, I'm sorry. I think I missed a little bit of the last part of what you were saying. Well, why don't you take this moment just to um, reflect a little bit on your history degree, particularly this rather <laughs> dynamic semester completing six courses. How did you do it? Oh, of course. Um, well, you know, it was it was pretty hard, but I just stayed home, did my classes on Zoom and really dedicated uh, to trying to you know, be committed to learning. Um, I had a lot of great professors this semester too, so I think that definitely, you know, contributed a lot to my success. Um, Professor Milliman, for example, um, his attentiveness to uh, making sure that, you know, I was getting everything done and understanding everything um, helped me so much, um, and just the encouragement in general. Um, I also want to note that my other history professor this semester, um, Dr. Perez, um, was also really inspiring to me, um, just seeing how um, eloquent of a speaker she is and how successful she is uh, really motivates me uh, to do the same in my life. So thank you. And then I guess just in general, the whole department, um, the school, and then I guess my own personal motivation to finally graduate got me there. Oh, that was just lovely, Emily. Thank you so much for sharing that those personal thoughts. And I know Professor Perez and other professors will really appreciate your sentiment and your thoughtful reflections. It means so much to us when we see our students succeed and particularly those who stuck it out and persevered against adversity. We now turn to Brian and William Pettipiece. Sorry, Brian William Pettipiece. Professor Paul Milliman writes, Brian took two courses with me, one during the pandemic and one after and one before it. In the first course, he presented an excellent analysis of animals in the bio tapestry, which were depicted at work at a play and on the dinner table. In the second course, during the pandemic, like many students, he analyzed the Black Death. But unlike most students, he analyzed it as the, rather as a pandemic that rather than just focusing on European history. Brian presented a nuanced analysis of the different reactions to the plague by Christians and Muslims based on primary source analysis. And he'll be starting his work as a high school teacher in Douglas shortly and we, and Professor Milliman hopes he'll bring that critical perspective to his new job. Professor Jeremy Vetter writes, congratulations to Brian on his graduation with a history major. Last semester in my history of American capitalism class, Brian performed exceptionally well and he has very strong written work and consistently asked and demonstrated a high level of participation in a fast paced series of creative learning tasks. I wish him well in his future endeavors. Brian, would you like to share a few words with us? Um, th thank you very much. I appreciate the, 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 the recognition and all the help from uh, the history department and its uh, wonderful professors. Thank you so much, Brian. And good luck in your new career in Douglas. We now turn to Justin Daniel Quinn. Professor Eric Perez writes, as a student in my sports history course in the fall of 2020, Justin was a thoughtful and deeply engaged student who frequently made useful connections between past historical patterns and current events. The fact that he did so well in an online class setting is a testament to his hard work. I appreciate, appreciated our conversations, especially those prior to class beginning on the day about his interest in filmmaking and his life experiences. I know that Justin's future work as a creative person will spotlight the voice of the underdog or the disenfranchised and offer empathy to those who have not been accorded such consideration. Best of luck to you. Justin, would you like to share a few words with us? Hi guys, um, I just wanted to thank the professors who have been absolutely fabulous for my entire time here. They're always 
uh, there to talk to you and have been incredibly sympathetic with any troubles any anybody's I've ever heard of really had. Um, and they are the reason that I've been successful here. So thank you very much to all of the people that have been so, so influential in my success. And um, yeah, success. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Justin. And now we turn to Alexiane Lily Ramirez. Professor Perez writes, I first had the pleasure of meeting Alexiane in my Mexican American history class last spring, the very semester the pandemic broke and we shifted to in-person meetings. I had met Alexiane, sorry for that interruption. I, I met Alexiane last fall for my senior capstone course on riots and social uprisings, a topic that when I initially scheduled it, I had no idea that it would be so germane to the events that unfolded. This semester, Alexiane took a third course with me in US women's history in all three of my classes with her. Alexiane was one of the hardest working, most thoughtful students. Her Mexican American history midterm remains one of my favorite student assignments in all my years of teaching. And we heard previously about the Loteria, uh, the Mexican bingo game card. In it, she hand painted beautiful images that incorporated class topics and historical figures. And it was accompanied by an essay rooted in research and course materials explaining the rationale be behind each of her choices. She has consistently been a hardworking and steadfast contributor throughout the courses that she's participated in. And she produced a solid thesis on Chicana contributions to the Chicana Chicana movement of the 60s and 70s. Please join me in congratulating Alexiane. Alexiane, would you like to say a few things? Hi, yes, I just wanna say thank you um, to Dr. Perez. She helped me out so much um, considering that I started with her when the pandemic first started. Um, I would also like to say thank you to my family and to my friends and everybody who's supported me throughout this journey. Congratulations, Alexia, thank you so much. We now turn to Shyla Nicole Rick Richardson. Professor Perez writes, Shyla has taken two classes with me in the past year, including a senior capstone on riots and social uprisings and a second on women's history. For her thesis, Shyla wrote about the Japanese American internment during World War II and an uprising that broke out, broke out in the Manzanar camp in December 40, 1942. Shyla engaged in an interesting research in government records, personal accounts, and digitized camp newspapers to document the social lives and labors and activities of fellow American citizens who were interned and deprived of their liberty during this period. Given the current hostilities against Asian Americans, Native Americans, Pacific Islanders, and others, I think Shyla's topic is timely and important. And in her thesis, she revealed the internal tensions between different constituents in the Japanese American community at various camps as they grappled with what it meant to be an American at a time when they had been deprived of their civil rights. Shyla, like so many of our students this year, experienced some difficulty finding meaning to school when the entire world seemed to be in upheaval and in uncertainty. And for that reason, I'd like to commend her for working so hard to produce a beautiful body of scholarship through a thesis that she should be proud of. Please join me in congratulating Shyla. Shyla, would you like to say a few words? Oh, hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Sorry, old, old class habits. Um, I just, this for past four years have gone by so fast. I'm just extremely grateful for the faculty and professors that I've had. Um, being a college student's tough and being a first gen student's even tougher. Um, so I'm really grateful to like Catherine for always having me in for 15 minutes so that I knew I was gonna graduate um, and professor Perez, I love you, Professor Hempel. Oh my gosh, you guys are great. You were two professors who really made me fall in love with history. Um, and just thank you for the program. I'm really excited to be con you know, graduating. Congrats to all the fellow seniors here. <laughs> thank you so much, Shyla. And because of the page, pagination, I omitted to mention uh, what Professor Wiener has written about you. Of course, you'll also receive those comments, but I'll just like to note that 
Professor Dagwina mentions that you wrote an essay for her in his, one of his classes on Russian history on the Khrushchev era film Clear Skies, and it was a model of excellent analysis, contextualization, and empathy. She's always the kind, she's the kind of student that we always look forward to having, and we're certain that she's going to bring her intelligence and human qualities to every endeavor she undertakes. So thank you again, Sharla. Now I'd like to turn to Samuel Rivera. Professor Kevin Gosner writes, Sam wrote a careful, thoughtful, and interesting capstone seminar on the first efforts of the United States and the Soviet Union to negotiate treaties to spread the limit to spread nuclear arms, to limit the spread of nuclear arms. <laughs> uh, all semester, he was a lively participant in class discussions, offering candid reflections on shared readings and on the anxieties and satisfactions of making slow but steady progress on an ambitious semester long project. He's a very capable writer and a sophisticated thinker, and I wish him the best. Sam, would you like to say a few words? Oh, it appears Sam's not here. Okay, I'd like to move on now to Wes Salter and uh, Professor Dr. Adam Donaldson writes, it has been my pleasure to have Wes for two of my courses. As a student, he's serious and open-minded and shows an affinity for extracting evidence from often difficult sources of primary, primary sources. I have seen Wes use that evidence to make historical arguments that are relevant, not only to the period under discussion, but to the lived modern experience as well. Professor Laura Tabili writes, Wes produced a highly original uh, study challenging the gender specificity of World War era shell shock. As we learned, uh, as I mentioned earlier this, uh, this afternoon, he produced uh, an interesting thesis that analyzed uh, the experience of the clinical symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Wes's findings demand scholars expand our inquiries to account for the trauma wars inflict on whole societies. And Professor Jeremy Vetter mentions, I enjoyed having Wes in my Vietnam and Cold War class last semester, where he was constantly strong participant in the historical role-playing games that we tried out. Whether through high-level diplomatic negotiations as an ambassador, preceding the Vietnam, Vietnam War, reckoning with specific incidents, or serving as a member of Congress, debating the legacy of the war and PTSD, uh, Wes demonstrated a strong capability to earnestly grapple with challenging material and portray roles with sensitivity and care. Wes, would you like to say a few words? Hi, uh, yes, uh, thank you all the professors for the kind words. Um, a, a few professors I've had for multiple occasions, Dr. Donaldson, Dr. Hemphill, Dr. Tabili, and then uh, Dr. Vetter, that Vietnam era class was amazing. Uh, Dr. Futrell, your, your class on uh, Cleopatra was just awesome. Uh, the, the enthusiasm of all the professors in the history department, just it, it really facilitated a, an environment of of learning and uh, that enthusiasm rubbed off on the students. So I just wanna say thank you to all the professors. Thank you so much, Wes. We now turn to David Stone. And David Stone, uh, Professor Paul Milliman writes, David and I both have three young kids and often had to pause our meetings to take care of our kids who are frequently guests in our Zoom meetings because they were sitting besides us as we supervised their work while trying to do our own. Despite those challenges, David continued to produce exceptional work, especially in the senior capstone thesis this semester. David developed a truly original thesis about the origins of ice hockey in North America as a combination of European hockey and golf games and Native American lacrosse. He can use this knowledge both in the classroom and on the ice because David plans to teach history and coach hockey at high school. Today is his first day in the UA's master's in education program in the teaching and teaching education program. Please join me in congratulating David. David, would you like to say a few words? Or perhaps he's already beginning his classes, I'm not sure. David is with us, great. Hi, um, well, thank you very much. Uh, big, big thank you to uh, some professors that were extremely instrumental in, in my college career, uh, Dr. Pierce, uh, Dr. Gallian, my advisor, and Professor Milliman. I, I learned so much, and I learned my uh, I learned so much at U of A, and I really enjoyed my time here. And 
I enjoyed it so much. I'm deciding to stick around for another year at the Teach Arizona program, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm happy to see some of my other history graduates uh, joining me in, in that endeavor. So good luck to you all, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. And uh, actually, that was a wonderful segue for me to give out a special thank you to our uh, colleague and friend, Dr. Catherine Gallian, who is the advisor to all of our history majors. Um, uh, Catherine, I haven't uh, pre-warned you about this, but I wonder before we transition to hearing from Dr. Gosner regarding the undergraduate honors thesis, whether you'd like to just say and share a few of your thoughts with the graduating class. Well, Catherine Gelling, it turns out Catherine isn't here, so I apologize for that. But I would like to take this opportunity to really recognize her extraordinary mentorship and tutelage of our, of our students. Uh, Dr. Gallian is not only a graduate of our program and a, a Latin American historian of distinction in her own right, but she has um, a wonderful capacity to uh, mentor and, and is really responsible for ensuring all the mechanics and uh, in terms of completion for our students. So if you have an opportunity in the future, please take, take the time to reach out and thank Dr. Gallian for her contributions. It's now my pleasure to pass the baton to my colleague and the former head of the history department, Professor Kevin Gosner, and he will help us as we continue to celebrate the achievements now specifically of our honor students. Dr. Gosner, you're muted. <laughs> you're muted. You would think I would have learned. Well, you know, it's funny. I just saw this very funny meme that said the Zoom meetings are the seances of the, of the current world where everybody is like, are you there? Can you hear me? Are you with us? We can't hear you. Yeah, well, here I am. Well, thanks very much, Benjamin. Um, it, it's been fun hearing from students and, and fun celebrating everybody's achievements. It's been fun seeing the mal some of the malaprops in the closed caption. Uh, I'm not Kevin Costner. <laughs> I'm not pursuing, <laughs> pursuing a second career after uh, my, my wonderful uh, years in Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's my great pleasure to recognize six students who uh, are honors college graduates this spring. Um, all of them, uh, along with completing the requirements, uh, the, the regular requirements for the history degree, uh, have completed honor, honors college um, requirements that include uh, a six credit two semester uh, thesis on top of the capstone. Um, many of them are double majors since uh, most of the ones I'll talk about today wrote a thesis in history, but a couple uh, wrote their thesis with colleagues uh, in other departments. Um, I'd also very much like to thank the, the faculty who served as thesis, their thesis advisor, work that really begins in the spring be before their senior year and continues uh, throughout the two semesters uh, of their last year with us. Uh, the first is Benjamin Jacob Ancharsky, uh, who worked with our colleague, Professor Gil Ribeck uh, in Judaic studies. Um, Ben's also all uh, been recognized by the history department in an earlier year. He was a uh, recipient of the Ursula Lamb Senior Prize in May of 2020. Uh, of Ben, Susan Crane uh, writes, since he's already an accomplished historian, Ben didn't need much assistance on his senior capstone project, where he investigated local memories of the 1811 German coast uprising, in which the enslaved people rose up and destroyed the sites of their enslavement. He made excellent use of both familiar and obscure sources and wrote with the confidence and skill of an experienced scholar. It was a pleasure to read his work. Congratulations on your honors thesis and on getting the undergraduate degree out of the way, Ben. I look forward to reading your books. Linda Darling writes, when you were in my class, I thought you had a lot of potential and now you're graduating and going on to bigger and better things. Congratulations. And Laura, from Laura to Billy, Ben is an extraordinarily gifted scholar who produced first-rate papers in History 321, 
I could rely on Ben for fresh, sophisticated analysis and discussions as well as papers. Congratulations, Ben. Ben, are you here? Great. Hello, oh, okay, yes. Um, well, first I'd like to express my gratitude uh, to my family, um, but I, I can thank them later in just a bit. Um, I thank the uh, history department. Um, I plan to get my PhD in history uh, eventually. So I thank everybody for being good uh, academic and uh, professional role models. So thank you very much. Well, congratulations, Benjamin. It's good to see you. Um, you've been to plays at the Arizona Student Theater. Maybe you've seen Ben uh, working, working the house. Uh, next up is, is Emma Caitlin Gould, who worked with uh, Charles Scrubs, uh, an early modern scholar in the, in the English department. About Emma, David Ortiz writes, Emma was enrolled with me three times during her education. I guess she liked your ties, David. Um, she's bright, conscientious, and a student with determination to achieve her goals. All of that resulted in her being an outstanding undergraduate student now headed to graduate school. Her skillful, careful, and thoroughly researched papers were a function of her writing acumen, which, I will, which will stand her in good stead as she takes on graduate work. Congratulations on your achievement, Emma. And Jeremy Vetter writes, congratulations to Emma for her outstanding work in multiple classes with me, including writing an excellent senior capstone paper last semester on tourism, regionalism, and the National Park Service, regional autonomy versus federal sovereignty, which involved an ambitious comparative study of three very different types of National Park Service units located in the West, South, and Northeastern regions of the United States. Yellowstone National Park, the Blue Ridge Parkway, and Independence National Historical Park. Her research was distinguished by a sophisticated conceptual framing and boldly using her specific case study material to address big issues in, the, in scholarly debates. Beyond the capstone, she also was a reliable and strong participant in historical role-playing games, often taking on especially challenging roles with sensitivity and care. I wish her the very best for her future endeavors, and I know she will continue to do great things. Emma? Are you here? Yes, you are. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you um, to Dr. Uh, Ortiz and Dr. Vetter and to all of my other fantastic professors and you know faculty members that have supported me throughout my studies in the history department. I, uh, I, you know, I knew I wanted to study history coming to the university, but I didn't know just how much I would love it. And this department has really made me feel like a part of a community of scholars and academics who really value uh, thought and you know pursuing your curiosities. And I've just really enjoyed being a part of. Uh, a community of people that encourage me and value me and respect me while I pursue my goals. So thank you so much. And I look forward to staying in touch with you all in the future. Thanks. Thanks so much, Emma. Well, next up is uh, a very beloved student who you've heard about already, uh, Katrina Cookshausen de Rose. I just wanna say before I, I read the comments of colleagues that I think every Friday since last March, uh, I've gotten a, a phone call from Katrina, her wellness call. She's been calling every member of the, of the faculty department. I think I've talked more with her in the last year than, than any, any other colleague. And uh, it's always a pleasure to hear her voice. Um, it's wonderful to, to see you today, uh, uh, Katrina. Uh, Katrina worked with Alison Futrell. Um, Susan Crane, though, writes first. Katrina did outstanding work on her senior capstone project. Um, now I'm not going to be able to pronounce the, the first part of the title. Um, the memnocene and leaf upcycling spolia at the, I'm sure I've completely butchered that. And my daughter's a classicist, so she'd be very ticked off with me. At the Athenian Acropolis in the fifth century BCE, she conducted fascinating research and wrote with sophistication. Katrina pursued her amb ambitions to conduct archeological digs in Italy and Greece during the summer, worked all year and all summer, in the history department, led the History Honor Society, stayed on top of all her coursework, and completed the senior honors thesis. She really does it all. Linda Darling writes, congratulations on graduating and best of luck in your future plans. Erica Perez, who Katrina worked with very closely in Phi Alpha Theta, 
um, has written quite a bit, and, and I think we all, uh, we all join Erica uh, in what she has to say. I want to devote my time today to talk about Katrina's amazing commitment as a member and president of Phi Alpha Theta, the history honors organization that is a national association with campus chapters. In the past several years that I've served as faculty co-advisor to Phi Alpha Theta, Professor Katie Hempel and I have witnessed a lot of peaks and valleys in terms of student participation. Once Katrina was elected president, we knew that we could turn over the reins of the organization to capable hands. Katrina took on a great degree of responsibility. She reached out frequently to UA faculty members, scheduling them to deliver monthly talks to undergraduate and graduate students, and publicized these talks to the campus community. She maintained a social presence for, for Phi Alpha Theta, as well as the history department as a whole. She organized fundraising activities such as book sales in partnership with the History Graduate Student Association and helped develop the cool t-shirt. Katrina also organized student conferences, open houses to publicize the scholarship of undergraduate students in the department, and she steered the development of a new history club on the UA campus, a club that that would allow any UA student on campus with an interest in history to participate in activities, regardless of whether they were affiliated with the history department or not. Ben, I think we need to offer Katrina tenure, don't you? Most importantly, Katrina and her fellow peers kept, PA, kept Phi Alpha Theta going, despite the fact that we were no longer on campus and all events had to be held online. I wanna offer my sincere thanks to Katrina. She will be missed as a constant presence in our department front office, as a student in our classes, and as a Phi Alpha Theta president. I wish Katrina the very best. Laura Tabilly writes, mere words cannot do justice to Katrina Cookshausen's extraordinary service to the history department over several years. From designing eye-catching posters for numerous classes and events to reminding absent-minded professors, who, me? Of various commitments, Katrina has mined a warm and cheerful presence in the history main office, as well as online. Congre congratulations, Katrina. We will miss you. Katrina, would you like to say, say something? Yeah, of course. I have to say thank you to you all. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet before my allergies and my emotions overcome me. <laughs> but to start off, I just want to say, of course, congratulations to all of my peers earning their BAs this week. Um, it's been a long, hard journey. So for me, and I'm sure for you all, um, as well as all the graduate students moving on from the history department, I'm incredibly grateful to have had the chance to get to know all of you and learn from you um, in class discussions or from JT classes. Thank you, of course, to all my fellow staff members, Adam, Dakota, and Jose, for working so hard behind the scenes and building a friendly environment for the history department. Thank you to Dr. Gallian, Dr. Vetter, and the various honors advisors and internship directors over the years for putting all your efforts into helping undergraduate students grow. You guys have been a great help to me, and I'm sure many other students. Oh my gosh, okay, thank you to the history department faculty, both for your amazing classes and for stopping by the front desk to have those casual conversations over cookies. They always brighten my day. Um, in particular, I have to thank Dr. Perez, Dr. Hemphill, Dr. Crane, Dr. Johnstone for your advice for grad school and research, as well as providing letters of recommendation as I applied for scholarships in graduate school. And then as Dr. Lawrence said earlier, last but certainly not least, Dr. Allison Futrell, thank you so much for being my mentor over the last four years. I couldn't have become the historian that I am today, nor the classical archeologist that I hope to become in the future without all of your steadfast support. Just all of you in the history department are irreplaceable, and I appreciate everything that you've done for me over the four years that I've been at the University of Arizona. Thanks so much, Katrina. Thank you, Katrina. You, your absence will be very much felt. Next up is Vanessa Marie McDaniel, uh, who did her uh, honors thesis with Paul Milliman. Paul writes, Vanessa was always cheerful and optimistic and working with her truly was a pleasure. She did four semesters of coursework with me, including an honors thesis and a senior capstone in which her research project won the 2019 Ursula Lamb Prize. Both of these massive research projects involve producing detailed lesson plans that are student-centered, research-oriented, research and focused on the exploration and analysis of primary sources. 
Hopefully Vanessa will get to use these fun and creative educational materials when she begins her career as a teacher. Today is her first day in the UA's uh, Masters of Education program in teaching and teacher education. Uh, Vanessa was my student as well uh, in World History for Future Educators, a class in which we often discuss ways to approach teaching subject matter that's complex and sometimes controversial. Deeply thoughtful, idealistic, and intellectually sophisticated, Vanessa also was unfail unfailingly practical and creative. She put together memorable lesson plans drawing on art history and choice selections of visual images to draw her imagined students into exploring the past. Vanessa is starting the Teach for Arizona program today, as we've told you, and I couldn't be happier. Vanessa, are you here? Great. Hi everyone, thank, huge thank you to the history department. Thank you, Professor Gosner and Dr. Milliman and Dr. Gallian. Thank you so much for your help and your guidance and for rec letters. I'm so excited to be starting today and it was nice to see other history graduates in our program. Thank you all for your help and guidance. Thank you. Congratulations, Vanessa. You know, this is extraordinary uh, to have so many, so many of our seniors moving on to teach for Arizona and careers in teaching. It's, I, it's really thrilling. Um, we should bring you all back uh, in 18 months when you finish that program and you can tell us, tell us all about it. Next up is Lily Mackenzie Olin, who worked with uh, Susan Crane on her, her honors thesis. About Lily, Susan writes, in 27 years of teaching, I've rarely had a student who needed to create new terms so that she could talk about her intellectual and academic interests. Lily coined new words all the time. That's how original her research and writing projects are. Lily did excellent work on her capstone paper, investigating the diverse responses within American Protestant churches to the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. Then she undertook a senior honors thesis in which she, she explored the his, historiographical significance of the term divine memory. We were astonished to discover that no one had ever written about this, not in theology, not in philosophy, not in memory studies. As Lily, Lily moves on to Regents, the Regents School Law School, Regents University Law School, I congratulate her on her exceptional work in history and the way she challenges accepted wisdom and thinks for herself. Keep it up, Lily. Lily, are you here? No, okay. Uh, well, congratulations to Lily. And last up is Melina Odalia Rodriguez, uh, who did her honors thesis in English uh, with our colleague Meg Loder Brown, uh, who's also an, an early modernist. About Melina David Ortiz writes, she matriculated in three of my courses, including this semester's World Comparative Revolutions course. Melina is a very bright student and a brilliant writer with a well-developed and engaging writing style. She's soft-spoken in class discussion, but when she speaks, her comments are always on point, trenchant, and demonstrate a sophisticated level of thought that belies her youth. Whatever you decide to do in the future, I hope you will keep on writing. Congratulations and best wishes to you, Melina. And Laura Tabilli has written, Melina Rodriguez produced an ambitious study comparing education policy in colonial India, South Africa, and Trinidad in the 19th and 20th centuries. Her findings showed the British state's efforts to construct educational systems that would support the colonial mission, that those efforts were tempered by each colony's pre-existing education systems, religious institutions, and linguistic histories. Congratulations, Melina, and best wishes for your future endeavors. Melina, are you here? Halfway here. You're muted. Hello. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone in the department, Dr. Ortiz, Dr. Hemphill, Dr. Tavili. Um, you've all been really instrumental in developing my sense of scholarship, and I um, really am thankful for all of your help. Thank you so much. 
Well, good. Well, let's just have one round of applause for all the honors, honors graduates. Congratulations, everybody. And I think now I get to pass the baton over uh, to David Ortiz, our director of graduate studies. Thank you, David. Brad. I have to say, I've known you for several decades, and you've never looked more professorial. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Thank you, Professor Kevin. Ortiz is going to introduce and so help us celebrate the graduates in the Master of Arts in History and in the Doctor of Philosophy in History. Professor Ortiz, take Thanks, it away. Thanks, Benjamin. Um, first, I want to welcome everybody to our graduate portion of the History Department Commencement Ceremony for 2021. Um, this is the second, and, and I sincerely hope the last, virtual graduation that we host online. Um, the new historians that I'll present to you and upon whom we will confer advanced degrees have achieved a great deal during their respective graduate careers with us. They are proficient in a skill set that well equips them to face the world they now inhabit. They are explorers of the past. They are interpreters of the past they explore. They then translate their interpretation of the past into coherent stories that reveal as much about the present as they do about their chosen studied past. Along the way, they develop empathy for whom and what they've studied and bring that to the present with them. They have walked a mile in the shoes of past human societies and learned that the past is not dead, but in fact alive with stories that can inform the present and illuminate the future. In a present where facts are referred to as fake news, and where lies are peddled as truth, <clears throat> we need historians like those who have earned their degrees today. We need them because they carry forward knowledge that cannot and will not be erased as long as we have historians like them to remind us of it. It is my great honor and immense pleasure to present to you the history masters and doctoral graduates of 2021. And I'll begin with Patrick Angiulo. Uh, Patrick wrote an MA thesis uh, the topic is the perception of Spain and Spanishness in Tucson at the end of the 19th century. More specifically, how Anglo-American and Mexican-American residents of Tucson at this time made use of the region's Spanish past to articulate their own relationships with and belonging in the region. Linda Darling writes of Patrick, when I had you in my classes as, as an undergraduate, you weren't sure you belonged or would be able to go on. You now have a graduate degree, congratulations. Uh, my colleague, Jeremy Vetter writes, I've had the pleasure of not only having Patrick in class more than once, but also having him as my teaching assistant on multiple occasions. As a student, he was a thoughtful writer and astute analyst of the assigned readings, not to mention also among other things, a memorable and effective leader of Kentucky state government during a time of crisis. He was a conscientious grader and section leader, always careful and hardworking, and bringing intellectual depth to his role. Patrick, if you're here with us, would you like to say a few words? Mute and turn up your audio. Sorry, my parents are in here with their own computer putting their own audio over it. So hopefully it's not echoing. All righty. Um, Professor Vetter had to put the Kentucky governor thing in <laughs> from his beloved reacting games. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, if you're an undergraduate here getting your bachelor's and I've encountered you, if you're a faculty, if you're in the administration, if you're a fellow grad student, if I've encountered you, um, you've shaped my understanding of history and you've shaped um, my, you know, how I approach this profession and how I approach how I write and, and you know, grade and everything. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, Maria Recorder, Jerry Vetter, uh, Juan Garcia, and uh, John Sensony. I've had the great opportunity to grade for and to uh, be TAs for and uh, help with the PhD with. Um, so yeah, and to all the other professors, I've had a great opportunity to help out with. And like I said, the students as well. Uh, I've had a wonderful, wonderful experience moving on from my undergraduate here to doing the master's. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. I, I, I might also add a stalwart hiking companion, pre, 
pre-pandemic when we we're able to hike together. So thank you. Enjoy your buds and all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, next is uh, Dean Messenger. Um, Dean is, uh, wrote an MA thesis, the topic of which is a new form, a new shape, and a new history, revolt and reformation in 16th century Vienna, 1519 to 1524. Of Dean, Richard Eaton writes, what I enjoyed about working with Dean in a seminar on comparative slave systems was his willingness, actually his eagerness, to explore peoples, times, and places very far from his European reformation comfort zone. I expect that he had been inspired by a dynamic lecture on 17th century Dutch colonial rule given by a visiting lecturer whom we both had heard. For he wrote two superb papers on the Dutch presence in the Indian Ocean and the place of slave systems in that context. The first explored debt bondage in the early modern Malay archipelago, in particular Makassar, under Dutch colonial rule. This paper was notable for its use not only of original Southeast Asian sources, but of the papers by other students in the class. The second paper shifted its focus to slave systems in South Africa under the Dutch East India Company. I look forward to learning about the next chapter in Dean's academic life. Wherever it leads, I wish you all the success in the world. I'm certain you'll find it. Uh, of Dean, David Graysborg writes, Dean Messenger is among the best students I've had. The pleasure of teaching at U of A over the course of two decades. He is intel intelligent, collegial, articulate, and possesses an acute intellectual curiosity. His peers can always count on him to take the initiative. I've observed that he consistently offers them help and provides a good model in the process of becoming full-fledged scholars. A fine future awaits Dean in his doctoral studies and professional pursuits. Uh, of Dean, one of his advisors, Uta Lotz Hoyman writes, it has been an absolute delight to work with Dean these past three years. Dean is an excellent histor historian who thinks deeply about the motivations of historical actors as well as historical structures and large scale processes. His MA thesis entitled, A New Form, A New Shape and A New History, Revolt and Reformation in 16th Century Vienna, 1519 to 1524, skillfully explores three interrelated stories, urban revolt, dynastic politics and religious movements at the beginning of the early modern period. Dean's enthusiasm for early modern and Austrian history, his deep knowledge and his collegiality undoubtedly leave a very positive mark on the division for late medieval and reformation studies in the department of history. He will be sorely missed. I wish him all the best for his future endeavors. There is no doubt in my mind that Dean will excel in whatever he sets his mind to. Paul Milliman writes, I'm going to miss working with Dean who just successfully defended a master's thesis, which is almost as long as some of the dissertations I've read. Dean did wonderful research and teaching projects in the seminar I taught on the world history of food. And he was doing a directed readings course with me at the start of the pandemic. He was very understanding of my childcare situation, which prevented me from giving him as much direction as I should have. The class was still successful though, because Dean needs very little direction. I know that Dean will bring both empathy and excellence in teaching and scholarship to the classroom when he begins teaching high school. Congratulations, Dean. Um, I'll add my congratulations to Dean. And we now move from the master's uh, degree people to the doctorates, beginning with Justin K. Campbell. Justin Campbell's dissertation is entitled Sovereignty Unbound. U.S. Congressional Militariz Militarization of the U.S.-Mexico, Mexico-Guatemala, and Guatemala-Honduras borders, 1971 to 2016. Of Justin, Kevin Gosner writes, I'm not quite sure where to begin with Justin. As an undergraduate, when I first met him, a kid from Marana with a passion for the Los Angeles Dodgers, who enlisted in the U.S. Army after high school. As a master's student who took a year off to take a civilian job in Zerbataya, Iraq, on the border with Iran, to pay off his student loans. Or as a PhD candidate who lived in Guatemala for a year and visited border towns in Honduras and Mexico and rode local buses northward through Mexico to follow the migrant trail. And now he's written a big, ambitious, superbly researched doctoral thesis on the militarization of US-Mexico border. 
Justin, we've been looking forward to this day for a long time. What a thrill to share it with you. Justin, if you're here with us, would you like to say something? Oh, gee, my bad, excuse me. <laughs> so let me go back. Dean, I didn't offer you a moment to say something. So I apologize and let's do that now. Great, hi. Um, thank you all the professors for all your kind words. These have been the best three years ever. Um, thank you, Dr. Letz Hoyman and Dr. Plummer, my advisors, and Dr. Milliman, who is also on my committee, um, Dr. Eaton and Dr. Gray's board, thank you for your kind words. Um, this was really an amazing, amazing three years, and I really appreciate everyone. Um, my cohort, especially, you guys have been amazing, um, very supportive. I've had amazing um, role models here, Rachel Small, Ruth Orpreza. Um, thank you all. Congratulations again, Dean. Um, now, Justin Campbell is with us. Uh, would you like to say a word or two, Justin? Uh, hello, uh, thank you everyone for um, the ceremony. Uh, I wanna thank my professors, my committee, um, Drs. Vetter and uh, Ortiz, uh, undergraduate and graduate um, um, coordinators. Uh, I'd also like to thank federal, uh, fellow students and the professors I TA'd for and um, staff past and present. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Okay, the next doctoral student is Annabelle Galindo. Um, Annabelle's dissertation is entitled Mapping Yaki Mobility. Community, Identity, and Labor, 1770 to 1940. Of Annabelle, her advisor, William Beasley says, Annabelle Galindo, a first-generation college student of Hispanic heritage, has already accomplished a good deal. In order to complete her dissertation entitled Mapping Yaki Mobility, Community, Identity, and Labor, 1770 to 1940, she had to become proficient in the Yaki language, learn Yaki tribal history and ethnography, shifted through dozens of archives while assisting with her mother's health care, raising children, and eventually working with the Pascua Yaqui Tribal Council on legal issues in both Mexico and the US. These are just the first stops on her academic journey. Felicitaciones, Annabelle. Of Annabelle, Kevin Gosner writes, this spring, Annabelle completed a rich, multifaceted, and highly creative dissertation on the history of Yaqui peoples in Northern Mexico the greater Southwest and California. In it, she explores their efforts to sustain communities and nurture their identity in a series of case studies that stretch over nearly 200 years of history from the conquest of the Rio Yaqui in Sonora and the early Spanish Presidios in Alta California to the mining boom in 19th century Chihuahua and the period of Anglo conquest and settlement in California during the gold rush right through the 1940s. She offers a provocative and persuasive reimagining of Yaqui history, a project that has been shaped in partnership with Yaqui Nation and enriched by her years of teaching with Yaqui students here in Southern Arizona. I'm deeply grateful to have had the opportunity to work with Annabelle. Of Annabelle, I wrote, uh, Annabelle was a graduate teaching assistant for me and I remember her bringing her infant daughter in a stroller to class, starting her very young on her intellectual journey how the years pass. Here is Annabelle earning her PhD after a brilliant and engaging public dissertation defense that I was lucky enough to sit in on. It's been a long road, Annabelle. My best wishes to you and congratulations on your well-earned success. If Annabelle is with us, would you like to say a few words, Annabelle? Hi, everyone. Leo Sanchimaniago, Quechemalea. Thank you. I just want to say a few words of express my gratitude to the whole history department, to my committee, um, Dr. Beasley, Dr. Gosner, Dr. Perez, and Dr. Few, who I started with um, as well, and everyone that I've got to uh, the opportunity to work with. Thank you, Dr. Ortiz, and um, 
just everyone, I'm really grateful. Uh, grateful for my family who's here around in the living room. Um, just we're excited. I'm excited to finally get this journey and find, uh, start a new journey and continue the work because there's a lot more to, to still do. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, family and friends. I could not do this without you. It's been a difficult year, but I'm here. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. And congratulations, Annabelle. Okay, I now turn to uh, Anna Goreshian. Um, she's not here, she was not able to attend, but I, I still wanna read the comments of, of Anna. Um, David Gibbs says, I have greatly enjoyed having Anna as my teaching assistant, talking with her about Iranian history. Congratulations on receiving your doctorate. Um, okay, I will move on now to Ruth Oropesa. Um, Ruth happens to be my doctoral student. Her dissertation is entitled The Healing Nation, Hygiene, Sanitation, and the Public Health Enterprise in Spain, 1845 to 1918. Of Ruth, Susan Crane says, uh, in her scholarly work as in her life, Ruth has been determined, persistent, and above all inquisitive. She is never satisfied with half efforts and always wants to work harder, which is hard to imagine. Her efforts have resulted in winning competitive grants to support her research and writing. Ruth has become a successful teacher, researcher, and writer, a leader among her fellow graduate students and in her campus activism. Ruth will defend her thesis this month. Actually, she defended it last Friday. Uh, and we can begin the celebration now. Well done, Ruth, you did it. Of Ruth, uh, Linda Darling writes, you've come a long way since you were first in my Mediterranean class. Congratulations and best of luck in your future endeavors. Uh, Laura Tabili writes, Ruth Oropesa's timely research shows the Spanish state led Europe and the world in producing an innovative public health system in response to a series of epidemics between the mid 19th century and the 1918 flu pandemic. Recasting public health as a driver of state formation offers an alternative humanistic narrative to the conventional focus on high politics, war, and diplomacy. Such imaginative thinking is the hallmark of Ruth's approach. In addition, Ruth has become a role model, mentor, and leader, not only in our graduate program, but through her fearless union and political activism. We will miss her. Um, I write of Ruth. Ruth Oropesa came to the University of Arizona with some essential attributes for success in graduate school. She was smart, determined, self-motivated, and committed to the work. Over the course of her years here, earning a master's degree and now her PhD, Ruth retained those attributes, added to them, and never wavered from her goal of earning her doctorate. She has earned many scholarly honors along the way, including Fulbright and Belinsky fellowships. She has written a pathbreaking dissertation that she defended last Friday. She is the most focused, determined, and hardest working student I have ever advised. She is an amazing archival detective, a wonderful teacher, and an extraordinary person. It has truly been my privilege to serve as her primary advisory while she was here at the University of Arizona. Ruth, I wish you only the very best as you open a new chapter in your life as Dr. Ruth Oropesa. Enhorabuena, Ruth. And if you are here, please come on and say a few words. You see your picture, Ruth. I think it's Segovia too. And, and you're, but you're muted. Hello everyone. Um, I want to thank my friends and family and professors who are here to celebrate with us. My biggest dream in life has always been to get an education and I had the privilege of growing up in the nineties. As a result, I constantly heard that education was an opportunity. At the time, I didn't know as a young migrant child that my journey would be challenging and not take the traditional route that I learned in school. 
Now, I returned to college in 2008 after failing my first stint in 2003. I signed up for intercession and the second half of American history. So American history has a special place in my heart. And I believe that it was in that moment that I realized this life was for me. People in the past never did what I expect them to, nor did they end up where I thought they would. I saw myself in those people who, like me, had lived on the margins of society, hidden and only left if historians were lucky enough a record of their existence. And my journey here has been challenging to say the least, and it was only due to the help of professors and national programs that my dream of getting an education shifted from a goal that many others who are much smarter and more dedicated than I am have failed to become a reality. It was a professor who told me about the McNair program, which gave me all of the support to apply for graduate school. So in many ways, I landed at the U of A by accident. However, despite not being completely sure what graduate was at the time, and I would argue that grad school is really difficult to explain unless you experience it, I was committed to finish. I was committed to go as far as I could and to invest in myself. My journey in education has always been about that. I want to thank my professors here at the history department. First, thank you, Dr. Ortiz, for accepting me into the program and fighting for me. I promised I would work hard and I hope I didn't let you down and I lived up to your expectations. I also want to thank Dr. Tabili and Dr. Crane for being in my committee and also providing a world of support. In addition, I want to highlight that being surrounded by female scholars was also motivating in itself. And a special thank you to Dr. Minayo Naziali and Dr. Martha Few who are no longer in the department, but their support in my master's thesis helped shape my research for my dissertation work. I also want to thank my colleagues who were with me in coursework, went, through, went with me through comps and let me complain as I groaned about my dissertation. While our work only has our name on it, many of our projects are not produced in a vacuum. So thank you, Danielle and James Barefoot, Rachel Small, Laura Keyes, and the many other colleagues who worked with me, supported me while I was in HGA, and were just completely amazing. I want to send a special thank you to my modern European colleagues like Dr. Jamie Stoops, who is just brilliant and again, really made me want to work harder and to keep up the work ethic of our caucus. And a special thank you to my best friend, my travel buddy, my partner at Academic Crime, Sofia Zepeda. There are generally not enough words to thank you for being so amazing and part of me, but also just plain badass. She's just so great. I honestly would not be here if it hadn't been for you. I had a really bad day my first year, and I had honestly decided to withdraw. But Sophia noticed that something was wrong, and we chatted about it, and I was able to vent, and it let me refocus so I could keep going. I realized that I had two options in graduate school. Either I could sit down and sew my mantra for my auto de fe every time I didn't know something or I was unsure and just wait for the defeat of my dream to happen. Or I could let myself vent and keep going. So I decided to keep going. Grad school is really pretending that your life pauses and goes on hold. And you ask your friends and family to do the same thing for you while you navigate this interesting space between student, researcher, presenter, and teacher. I missed birthdays, holidays, funerals, and other celebrations. But my family always supported my commitment to school. And so when you learn that first-generation students are ill-equipped to deal with graduate school or college, I have to challenge that because my family's unwavering faith in me and their faith that I could figure things out and work hard kept me going. And it was thanks to their sacrifices that even though we didn't have much, they made me want to return their investment tenfold. So I want to thank my parents, Margarita and Senon Cavada, for giving me the freedom to go on this journey. I also want to thank my siblings, Fonz, you helped me carry dozens of books from the library and to keep our household of two initially together as we both worked our butts off. You to get your BA and me to get this PhD. You're the real OG, I love you. I also want to thank my sisters for sending me pictures, snacks, support and love and keeping Fonz and I alive. Thank you for also thinking that I was smart and never questioning it. Thank you for saying you were proud of me because even as I doubted myself, I didn't want to let you, you guys down, my nephews or my niece. I also want to thank my husband, Robert Oropeza. We both come from very humble beginnings, but pursuing our education was the goal we shared. Even though this journey took him to two bachelors of science and mine took me to the higher echelons of education, we did it. And I look forward to what else we can accomplish. 
I also want to take this opportunity to address all of the history department. For many students, this moment is really all we have. This is our dream. We sacrifice, we go into debt, we try and try again to accomplish this goal. While for some undergrads, college is just a means to get a job, for many first generation students and students of color, this is an accomplishment that our families have not had access to before. We believe that this is a space of education, growth, and opportunity. However, the last year, the U of A administration has challenged this. Many who make the decisions for the University of Arizona are not educators or professors themselves. And I have seen a wall build up that does not view our university as this vibrant space of growth and education, but rather one of business where, man, where money needs to be extracted. While I know that there are limits to what we can do individually, I urge our college, our department, our professors, our staff, graduate students as instructors, our students and their parents to demand for more. Let us preserve the opportunity and dream we have accomplished for others. The wonderful experience everyone has had at the U of A will not remain if we do not fight for it to stay that way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruth. Congratulations. Um, our final doctoral student is Frank Whitehead. His dissertation was entitled Letter Buck, Gender and Animal History in 20th Century American Rodeo. Of, of Frank, Jeremy Vetter writes, I have greatly enjoyed working with Frank as his major advisor during his years as an MA and PhD student. From way back in the days when he was a student in my course on the US Gilded Age and Progressive Era, through the recent completion of his excellent PhD dissertation on the history of rodeo, which focused on gender and animal history, he has always stood out for his perceptive and fair-minded readings of the scholarly literature. His careful, crafted, and engaging writing and his thorough and professional approach to his research. While remaining deeply rooted in Southern Arizona throughout his life and academic career thus far, he has reached out and admirably and successfully to build collegial scholarly relationships outside of Arizona. And I've always been proud of, to have him representing our university and our history graduate program. I will be happy to follow his emerging career as his research and writing work is poised to reach a wide audience with his thoughtful narrative storytelling and sophisticated analytical insights. If you're here, Frank, please come on and say a couple of words. Hello, everyone. Um, so first, I, I have to thank my committee, Dr. Vetter, especially for the many many hours of uh, supportive office chats and more lately Zoom calls and emails. Um, Dr. Morrissey, thank you for pushing me to expand my uh, academic and social comfort zones more than anyone else. Um, Dr. Few uh, for introducing me to the possibilities of animal history and um, Dr. Hempel for graciously joining my committee later and for making me think way too much about rodeo clowns for the last month. Um, I also want to thank uh, all of the other wonderful and supportive faculty, staff, and grad students within the department, um, especially Dr. Wiener and Dr. Urban, um, who served on my comps committee. And finally, I can't thank my family enough. Um, my parents, Ellen, Alex, thank you for supporting me mentally and emotionally and many other ways all these years. Um, and especially, finally, I, I have to thank Jenny and Ryan. Thank you for pushing me and convincing me that this was possible because I didn't believe it myself a lot of the time. Um, without you, this degree would have taken me twice as long to finish, that's for sure. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Frank. And with that, I turn the emceeing duties back to Benjamin. You're on, Ben. Thank you, David. Well, thank you everybody for uh, coming together today to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our graduates, our undergraduates and our graduate students, our awardees of Bachelor of Arts in History, Bachelor of Arts with Honors in History, Masters of Arts and PhD, uh, Doctorate in Philosophy in History. Uh, as you can see, we have some truly remarkable students 
just as we have truly remarkable colleagues, professors and staff here in the department. It's been a very difficult year for many of us to uh, navigate. Uh, I know that some of you have suffered, some of you have been ill, some of you have lost loved ones to this terrible pestilence that has uh, infected the world. Um, I know that uh, some of you have suffered and, and most of you have managed to uh, sustain your strength and assist others. And as we heard from a number of the students, the camaraderie and collegiality and friendship among the students and among the students and their mentors and their peers is what makes it possible for us to sustain uh, this department and sustain uh, the community of scholars that we are. So with those final considerations, uh, a brief reflection on what we've endured and survived this past year and a half, I'd like to thank you all for coming together. That brings us to the end of our very small ceremony. As David said, I hope this is the last time that we need to do this on Zoom. I look forward to being able to resume in-person activities. Hopefully I'll see a few of you tomorrow afternoon in the evening at the uh, college, SBS college graduation ceremony. I'd like to thank our wonderful staff and colleagues for putting this together, in particular the indomitable Dakota who has masterful uh, skills of organization, uh, particularly organizing this seminar through Zoom. I'd like to congratulate our graduates once again. I'd like to thank my colleagues for their wonderful support and mentorship of their students who have graduated today. And finally, I'd like to wish all the graduates every success in the future. Uh, all that we ask is that you keep in touch with us and periodically update us about your great new achievements and even more wonderful successes. Thank you so much.